We will uh, enter into our service this morning by singing hymn number 385, 385. I will announce the hymn, hymns uh, this morning just in case someone didn't get a bulletin. Uh, we're going to probably transition back to our bulletins here over the next few weeks, but just in case someone doesn't get one this morning, it would be hymn number 385. Remain seated. Good morning. My brothers and I welcome you this morning to the house of our Lord. And he has prepared this sanctuary for us this day that we might come and that we might sup with him. And from 1 Nephi chapter 3, we read these words. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, having heard all the words of my father concerning the things which he saw in a vision... And also the things which he spake by the power of the Holy Ghost, which power he received by faith on the Son of God. And the Son of God was the Messiah who should come. I, Nephi, was desirous also that I might see and hear and know of these things by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of God unto all those who diligently seek him, as well in times of old as in the time that he should manifest himself unto the children of men. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the way is prepared from the foundation of the world, if it so be that they repent and come unto him. For he that diligently seeketh shall find. 
and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto them by the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in this time as in the times of old, and as well in times of old as in times to come. Wherefore, the course of the Lord is one eternal round. And so it is we come this morning. We come seeking, we come asking, we come knocking to receive our Heavenly Father. And he has come this day, and he has opened the doors for us, that we might come and we might receive that which he has prepared for us, the sacrament, his son, Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that we might continue to seek, that we might continue to knock, and that we might look to our Heavenly Father and receive that which he has for us this day, that indeed we might be filled with his spirit. Might we worship him this morning and continue and sing hymn number 63, hymn number 63. Our Lord and our Father, what an absolutely beautiful day that uh, you have provided for each one of us. Lord, uh, this time of year is truly special. And uh, we've received a life-giving rain, one that washed the air clean, one that takes nourishment down to the roots of uh, all the plants, one that... Uh, uh, gives water to all of the animals and to us, Lord, as well. And Lord, so it is this day as we have gathered 
uh, we too are going to uh, take something within our bodies, the most precious gift that's ever been offered. And Lord, as we do so, may we uh, be mindful that it can nourish us in more ways than uh, just growth, that there is forgiveness along with uh, the spirit of your love that we can consume. And because of this gift, all have been invited to partake that have joined in the waters of baptism. Lord, I am so thankful for that and that covenant that you've given us. And I'm appreciative of that. And may each one of us reflect on that as we reach forth our hand this day. I would pray, too, for my brother Mark. Uh, it's never, never easy to occupy the pulpit. But in doing so, Lord, he gets to share those insights that you have placed upon his heart. The uh, things that have happened to him in his life that have become a testimony. May he be able to bear those up that we all, each, might uh, uh, not only listen, but remember the testimonies that you've given us as well. Continue to be with us this hour. And Lord, please, be with those who are at home and those who are unable to be here. Bless them is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen. As we prepare to uh, partake of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper and the emblems are prepared, let us sing uh, hymn number 372, 372 and remain seated.
prayer over the bread is read. Please kneel as much as possible. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that, it may, that they may eat it in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him and keep His commandments, which He has given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Once again, shall we kneel? O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may, ha that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
I'd like to begin this morning by sharing with you from 2 Nephi, 11th chapter, verse 56. Wherefore ye must bow down before him and worship him with all your might, mind, and strength, and your whole soul. And if you do this, you shall no wise be cast out. In our last uh, time we met together before the altar to partake of the the bread and the wine, representation of the body and the blood of Christ, you remember our brother Josh stood and brought some thoughts and a message that day. And in that message, part of it was he asked the question or posed it hypothetically, why do we come today? Well, I've, th- th- I've asked myself that question a few times in my life. And I had to revisit that question after Josh asked it, before part- or after partaking of the sacrament. You know, I asked myself, why do I come today? Why did I choose five decades ago to be baptized? Why do I keep coming back to the house of the Lord? Why do I do anything? Why did I accept the priesthood callings that I did? And I thought about that. Well, I'm going to give you the answer. Thank you, Josh, for uh, it's uh, it's amazing the way God works. One word, one sentence, one prayer can open up your heart and send you on a journey, a journey that you need you need to take. Before I go any farther, I'll make a confession. Today's the first time I've stood in four years, one week short, four years standing before you. And it's not because I wasn't asked. This will be a whole other sermon maybe sometime. It wasn't because I wasn't asked. It was by my own doing, my own choosing. But let me say this. You cannot run and hide from the Holy Spirit. So the question is asked, why am I here today? Because I, li- I believe in a, in a living God. I believe in a God that created this universe. He created the stars, the heavens, the moon. He created this very earth that we stand upon. The hills, the valleys, the mountains that we enjoy, the oceans, the lakes that we fish in. And he enriched this earth. He allowed this earth to live so that it may sustain life. And then he created us, you and me. I believe in a God that has shed his grace and mercy upon his people. I know he has me. I believe in a God that allows us to come to him this day and each and every day of our lives to seek him out and ask for repentance. I believe in a God that hears our prayers and answers our prayers, whether they may be answered immediately, like most of us would like them to be, or they're answered over time. I believe in a God that has walked with me from the very first step I took as a toddler. And yes, I've fallen. And yes, as an adult, I have fallen. But yet he is still there to pick me up and to hold me, to brush me off as you might do a toddler. And yes, and on occasions as he's picking me up, he may give me the little pat on the bottom says, you know better. I 
I believe in a God that will be with me to the last step I take upon this earth. So I ask myself, why am I here? I'm here to praise my Lord, to kneel before him, to rededicate my life to him, as we all just did, through the through uh, partaking of the emblems. That's what we've done. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to praise him, to thank him, and to give him all the glory for my life and for what he's given me. So that's why I stand before you this morning. That's why I continue to return each and every uh, week that I possibly can on Wednesday nights I've returned there too. You can't hide from the Holy Ghost. Rex, you don't know how appropriate your prayer was for me. You'll know here in a minute. As I said, four years. My brother Ken knew that. It's kind of hard when your brother's a pastor. He texted me a month ago. And when he says, I feel led by the Spirit, well, it's hard to deny. So I said, yes, I'll do it. Well, here's what I did. After I said yes, I started going to my Heavenly Father in prayer, mostly silent prayer. And I would ask that he would give me uh, guidance, direction, insight, knowledge. And he would uh, allow the Holy Ghost to rest upon me, to direct me in the direction I should go what I should bring today. Remember what I said, how God answers prayers. At home one day, I was praying silently. And I got to the part in my prayer, I don't know how you all pray, but it seems like I've got a standard. And I got to the point where I was thanking God for the life of his son, Jesus Christ. And when I got to that point, it seemed as though my um, my mind started to wander. And it kept wandering. And each time I tried to bring myself back to the task of my prayer, my mind continued to wander more. It got to the point I started to actually try to apologize to God in my prayer for being weak. For allowing my mind to wander, I thought I was being weak. Well, here's the power of the ghost, the Holy Ghost. It was made known to me that I wasn't being weak. I was being submissive. I was being submissive to his power. So instead of fighting him, like I have for the last four years, I allowed him to work within me. And what occurred, and where my mind was taking me, first of all, let me say this. I will not stand here before you and say that I was physically there. But I will say that the Holy Ghost allowed me to see things and to feel things and understand better as to what was taking place. The first thing that I saw that I was taken to was the tomb of Jesus. I did not see my Lord and Savior, but I saw the, um, the linen that he was wrapped in. I thought, now, why is this important? Well, sure, it's important. 
I realized then that it was important for me to thank God, as always, for the life of his son. After all, he came to this earth. He brought the gospel. He brought love. He brought peace. He brought forgiveness. He brought all these things. He called his disciples to work, as we were all his disciples to do a work. He set forth the motions of the gospel that we love today. And he's performed many, many miracles. So yes, it's important. Thank God for the life of his son. And this may sound off kilter, but it's just important to thank him for the death of his son and the resurrection. Why is that important? From Isaiah 8, 79 through 81. And now if Christ had not come into the world speaking of things to come, as though they had already come, there could have been no redemption. And if Christ had not risen from the dead or, <clears throat> or spoken, uh, excuse me, broken the hands of death, and the grave should have no victory, and that death should have no sting, there can be no resurrection. For there is a resurrection, therefore the grave hath no victory, and the sting of death is swallowed up in Christ. Christ defeated death. He defeated the grave. He was resurrected. God did not do this to show the people how great and powerful and mighty he is. No. He did that out of love. Of love for you and me and for those people of that day. He did that for every man, woman, and child that ever walked this earth and ever will walk this earth. The same as he took upon him all the sins of the world. Past, present, and future. He did that so that we may live. That when that time comes, that we too may come back or come forth with him. I was reading an article just a couple of weeks ago um, about how many people today in this country, I believe it was, and I don't remember the figure. I didn't write it down because it, 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 it awed me. Believe that once our time is up on this earth, that's it. That's not the case. It's not the case. It, it bothered me. It hurt me to believe that there's so many people out there who don't know the truth. That is why Christ came. That's why he lived. That's why he died. That's why he was resurrected. So that we may live. When Christ was on the, uh, uh, the cross, remember the story. One man... Def, um, rebuked him. The other man accepted him as Lord and Savior. And even though that man was convicted of the crime, Christ forgave him. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. When Christ was resurrected, he came back to his disciples. It came time for Christ to, to return to God into heaven. Of course, the disciples didn't want him to go. I'm sure none of us would want him to go. But he says, It's expedient that I return, for I go to prepare a place for you. He went to prepare the kingdom for each and every one of us. Then he goes on to say, But in my place I will send the, whole, the Comforter, the Holy Com Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, all three in the same. What a beautiful gift that God has given us, His Son. That's how great His love is. So much love that we love each other, we love our, our, our family, but it pales in comparison. I can't explain the amount of love 
other than what the scripture says, no greater love has a man if he lays down his life for another. No greater love. How many times do we multiply that by Christ? Hundreds of millions, if not billions. Again, my mind was, um, I allowed my mind to, to, I guess, to roam. And the next thing the Holy Spirit allowed me to see or to understand a little better, I found myself going back in the third chapter of uh, Genesis, the beginning. And in this setting, I saw, we all know the story of the rebellion. Now, first I want to understand that Lucifer and Jesus were both in tune with God at the time. They know the will of God. They knew the will of God and still do. Brother and sisters, the will of God is very simple. That he does not want to lose one soul. Does not want to lose one single of his creation. That's, that is what God wants. Well, we know the story. Lucifer knows that. And I also believe that they both knew what was to come. They both knew the will of God. They both know the future. Well, Satan says, send me, and I will assure you that we will not lose one soul. But yet, give me the glory. There should be no other God before me. That wasn't going to fly. See, Satan wanted to come down and rule with an iron fist. A tyrant, a dictator. Not what God wanted. We know that God gave us our agency. He gave us the ability to decide right from wrong, to walk in darkness, or to seek the light. So we know that he was expelled. Christ goes to God and says, Send me, and I will give you the glory. Here's my point. What is that? Mathematicians, 4,000 years? Christ knew at that point in time what he just volunteered for. He knew at that time. He volunteered to come and to be our sacrificial lamb. He knew the pain and the suffering he was going to endure. He knew then. And he still volunteered. I can't fathom 4,000 years or so of knowing my fate. That's the love of God. That's the love of Jesus Christ. And the last thing my, um, I feel as though I was led by the Spirit. I return to the cross. It was prior to Christ being uh, nailed to the cross. I envisioned Jesus kneeling, a broken man. We all know what happened. I won't dwell on that. The pain and the suffering that he suffered, his broken body. He was a broken man physically but not spiritually. So I envision him kneeling, head bowed with the thorns. The scriptures don't bear this out. At least I've never found it. But I felt as though I heard Jesus weep. And it wasn't weeping out of pain. It was He was weeping out of love and compassion for the people. That's why he did what he did, was out of love and compassion. If you back up a little bit to the house of Lazarus, Christ went there. And what was Lazarus had passed? Three, four days? When he met his family, they were weeping. 
crying for the loss. The scriptures tell us Christ wept. He wept because he loved the family. He loved Lazarus. And he he had compassion for them. And we know he rose Lazarus from the dead. The very same thing. The very same thing that he did when he went to the cross. He gave us the opportunity to come before him to enter into thy kingdom. Our Heavenly Father weeps for us today. He sobs for us out of compassion. There's no doubt that when he looks upon this earth, he looks upon me and sees me dwelling in my weaknesses or walking in darkness, that he weeps. He weeps for you. He cries for you. He's calling us today, just as the picture behind the font depicts. He's got his outreach arms to each and every one of us. Will we answer that call? Will we come to him? That is why we're here today. That's why I'm here today, to praise my God, to thank him. To thank him for all that he has done. There's so much more, so much more to come, and so much more for us to give. I'll finish with um, one scripture. Again, it's another familiar one, John 6, 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Indeed, our Heavenly Father is worthy of all of our praise, our adoration. It is because of He that we are. And He blesses us so richly. And as Mark has shared, the love that He has for us is unmeasurable. And because of his love, we have been uh, blessed today and each and every day of our lives. And part of our responsibility to that love is to let that love and that light shine forth that others might come to know. Because as Mark said, there's so much in this world that doesn't reveal the truth and people don't know the truth not that we know it all but yet we have light and truth that has been presented to us and it's our responsibility and stewards of that gospel of Jesus Christ that has been uh, entrusted unto us through this church that God has brought forth here in the latter days to allow that light of his truth to shine forth. And one way that we do that is through our tithes and our offerings. And as you know, we haven't been passing the uh, collection plate, but yet we have those plates in the foyer for our giving as you come and go from the sanctuary. And with those tithes and offerings, the offerings here, we support this sanctuary, this church, that God has blessed us with. And our tithes we give because we've been commanded to tithe, that it might be outreaching into this world and to spread that gospel in ways that others might come to know of the love that has been spoken of this day. When I met with the pastor at uh, Friday morning with Ted and Rex, 
I told him I felt a desire that we need to be more outreaching. That we need to let that love of Christ shine forth and through our acts of goodness. And that as a people who have been richly blessed, that we need to share that. And so if you've got one of the bulletins this morning on the back of it, you'll notice that there's the very last one, there's a closed drive. And that's one of the things that uh, you'll be doing over the next month or so. You can read that. Uh, maybe you're doing some spring cleaning around the house, uh, cleaning out the closets and drawers, and there are items that maybe you no longer use or need or wear, particularly we're speaking of clothing items here, that we would like to collect those and give those. There are many civic organizations and groups that help those people in need. And so if you have any of those items, uh, please get with Ted or Mandy. And uh, maybe we can bring them here and put them in one of the rooms in the classrooms back here. But we'll hear more about that next week. But there are so many opportunities for us to share. Because we have been blessed, we need to let that light of Christ shine and to minister to other people. And so I would just encourage us, if you have any ideas or ways that we might be of service to others, Please let Ted or Rex or I know that we might allow that light that we've been so richly blessed with shine forth and to others in this community around about us. Will you pray with me, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity to uh, come and together and to share in this sacrament, Father, that you have prepared from the foundation of time that we might come and partake, Father, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And how blessed we are to have this opportunity to have that light, Father, of your Son shine upon us. And this day, Father, we have responded by uh, reaching forth and once again uh, allowing him to fill us. And I pray as we've uh, read through the prayers this morning, that your spirit would always be with us. And in doing so, Father, because of the love and the touch of the Master in our lives, we might desire to reach out as well. And though we know there is more to this life than just giving of our finances to help, Father, there is much we can be about in our lives to uh, lend a hand, to offer those things that we have unto others because you have blessed us, Father, not only spiritually, but temporally. And in doing so, it's part of our stewardship to give. And so I would pray that you would bless us in our efforts and in our uh, desires here in this congregation, that we might allow that light of your Son, Jesus Christ, to shine forth through our acts of love and the response to your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that those... Uh, monetary uh, givings that have been uh, brought forth. We pray, Father, you would bless them, that they would be used for the wise purposes of sustaining this facility and meeting the needs of those here in this congregation. But also, Father, there is much need within this world that as we give our tithes, that they would reach out and to minister. And we've expressed those in the recent past of how our tithes have been used in this world to help those who are uh, in distress. And so I would pray that you would bless those tithes and offerings and bless our giving, Father, in all that we do, that through this you might be glorified, Father, and others might come to know of your love and your goodness and the light of your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be hymn number 580 or 582, some hymnals are different, 580 or 582, what a glorious thing to be in the light.
Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this time that we're able to spend together. Thank you for the words that uh, would come from thee. Thank you for your spirit and the love that you have for us. And may you continue to uh, shed upon us that mercy that we might be, a, be able to be forgiven, that we might have that opportunity to walk in your light, to be able to uh, walk beside you, and that uh, if given the opportunity to be your hands and feet, that we may respond, that being a responsive people might be able to share the love of you, to be able to uh, open our hearts up to others and to share testimony, to bring joy and happiness into others' lives and to be able to give willingly. Be with us this, uh, this week to come. Bless us all. Continue to provide for us as needed that we might be able to uh, be your hands and feet. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.